There's a picture of it. One reason that we still have this available for us today is because that it became, after it was destroyed, it became a graveyard. And so while you have buildings all around it in this one spot, because the sacred graves, they did not build on it. And so even today, it, it looks just like this. And you can see the agora or the marketplace. You can see the columns on the sidelines there that, that uh, they have reconstructed. Now, how did they make these columns? I thought this was very interesting. Uh, they would make uh, the base of the column, and then you can see that there's a groove and they would pour uh, molten lead in that groove, and then they would put a, a, um, a piece of wood inside of it, or a piece of marble, and then they would build the, the um, column around it. But that's how they got them to stand up, is that they would anchor them with lead, and they would have the lead, they would put in the lead while it was still liquid and then it would hold it into place. Here's part of the graveyard again. More of the graveyard. And again, you know, if this was in this country, uh, there'd be gates around all of this and you'd have to pay a fee to get in to see it. Here you just walk up to it. it, it it's not protected. Anyone could go in. Anyone could vandalize it. It's, it's unbelievable how free and open it is. And uh, here is a part of a lion. The, the, the more elaborate your tomb was, the wealthier you were. The family of, of the deceased, if they had a lot of money, they could afford uh, a lot of uh, elaborate uh, carvings on the tomb. Now, at the bottom of this picture, you see the field we've just been talking about, which is really the top of the, uh, the marketplace, the basement underneath. Then you see where the arrow is. There's a green patch right there. There's building all around it, but right where the arrow is, there's a green patch. And that green patch is very special because that is where Polycarp was martyred. And we're going to talk just a little bit about that now because of his great faith and that he was in this city that was uh, so known for the persecution. Here's a fresco or a painting in the plaster that's inside the, the church of St. Uh, Polycarp of Izmir in uh, Turkey. And here you see Polycarp uh, being burnt at the stake and the, the story is that they tried to burn him at the stake but he would not burn so the uh, guy comes up you can see he's the soldier or the caretaker with a knife and so he stabs him to death we have no way of knowing if that story is true or not but that's sort of the story that built up around this here is his testimony. Now, the, in the Roman Empire, they had no, uh, no desire to have people all view things the same way. So they were tolerant of religions and beliefs that were somewhat different. But everybody had to worship the emperor, the Caesar. That was not negotiable. And, and what they did is they would bring Christians in and they would say, will you recant? And if they said yes, they were released. But when Polycarp was asked if he would recant and offer a sacrifice to Caesar for his freedom, this is what Polycarp said. And it's recorded for us by uh, one of the early Christian church historians. He says, for 86 years, he's an old man, he's 86, he says, I have served him and he has done me no wrong. 
How then can I blaspheme my king who saved me? Isn't that a great testimony from this giant Christian man? And a Polycarp, it is said, was actually a disciple of, of John, the Apostle John. Polycarp's prayer became famous and it was recorded. He prayed while he was on the stake, O Lord, Almighty God, the Father of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we have come to know you, I thank you for counting me worthy of this day and hour of sharing the cup of Christ among the number of your martyrs. So this man is praying to God and he says, thank you for allowing me to be sacrificed as Christ was sacrificed. You know, I have a feeling most of us, and I'm including myself in this, we'd be praying for an escape. You know, Lord, let there be an earthquake or something. Let me get out of this mess. But Polycarp is praising God for the opportunity to die for the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the outside of the church of St. Polycarp and uh, Ismer. And uh, this is the inside. And here's what's interesting about this city. Smyrna is the only city of the seven to still have a Christian presence. In Turkey, the Muslim faith is about 99%. The Christian church flourished for a while in Ephesus, and then it died off, just as had been predicted. But in Smyrna, the church, just like the city, it keeps coming back to life. And in fact, on that hillside that I showed you a minute ago where Polycarp died, it is said that there was, was one execution uh, that, that 150 uh, people were killed and it said their blood reddened the side of the mountain. And, uh, and, and that was all at one time. Then an, uh, another time, a, a group almost as large was killed. And then there were individual persecutions and executions uh, as well. So it was notorious for dying and coming back to life, both the city, the church, and the people believed that they would come back to life. This is a picture out of our motel room window. Now here, this is the shortest message, and here's what it says. To the angel in the church of Smyrna write, that's Revelation 2.8. And the angel, we're told in, the, in that very first vision that John had, there was Jesus Christ, and he had seven stars in his hand. And then he interprets it, and he says, the seven stars are the seven angels. And each church had an angel. What he's talking about is each church had a bishop or a pastor. And in this case, it was Polycarp. So he was the leader of the church, so they went after him. It says, the first and the last. You know, we've already been introduced to the Alpha and the Omega. Now it's the first and the last who was dead and has come to life says this. So the characteristic of Jesus that's used in addressing this particular church is the one of resurrection. This message is coming from the one who has been resurrected. And he says, I know your tribulation and your poverty. Because they would not participate in the festivals and the worshiping of the, of the emperors, their businesses suffered. They were poor. No doubt they were homeless. As the state tried to do everything they could to take things away from them in order for them to recant, as a last resort, they were executed. He says, I know your poverty, your physical poverty. However, he says, I know you are really rich because they had a rich faith. And the blasphemy, he says, I know all about the tribulation, the poverty, the blasphemy, by those who say they are Jews and are not. 